Daily Tanya Share. Today is the 18th, Chai Adar Sheni, March 28th. In today's lesson, every Jewish soul has a corresponding part of this world which depends on it for elevation. Do you understand what that means? That means that only you can fulfill a particular mission that you were given. No one else can do it. No one. So if you don't do it, it's not going to get done. Now, what is that mission? I don't know. I can't answer that question, but I could tell you is make sure you do everything within your capacity to do because that might be a part of your mission. So it's our job. Sometimes you feel, you sense, you're, you you have a certain um, affinity to certain mitzvahs that draw you, that pull you. That might be your mission. But other times, you just, you love learning, you love Hashem, you love the Torah, you love the mitzvahs. You got to just do everything you possibly can to fulfill your mission. In the Oil Moemis, in the next world, you'll be given a nice reward and say, oh, you fulfilled your mission. Every opportunity you run to it, you don't just you don't just take it. You absolutely chap the chatchila riba, right? So why is it that suffusing the vital soul with oyin seif and banishing the impure klipas from the vital soul produces a parallel effect in the entire world? Why is it that our pushing away the evil and making sure to fulfill a mitzvah is so important? Why? He klolus yisrael shehein shishiri b'neshamis prati is. The fact is that that for the community of Israel, for all the Jewish people, comprising of 600,000 particular souls, is the general source of vitality for the world as a whole. We keep the world sustained since the world was created for the sake of these souls. Of course, there are many more offshoots from these 600,000, but the point is that the world is being sustained because of and by these neshamas that come into the world, our neshamas. Each specific one of them contains and to each is related the vitality of one 600,000th part of the world. One 600,000th. I'm not good at math. But basically, your neshama gives vitality and sustenance and the ability to exist and to thrive into your part of the world. And it doesn't mean just where you're sitting, but your avir, your atmosphere, your physical and spiritual footprint. This part of the world, despite, I'm sorry, this part of the world depends on his vital soul for its elevation to Hashem through the vital soul's own elevation. What does that mean? This means that when one elevates his portion of the world by taking a a, a, a cup of tea and saying a bracha over it by learning and davening at this particular time and in this particular place, literally also utilizing his physical body, not just on a spiritual level, by using the objects of this world that one's body and neshama need for the sake of serving Hashem, one elevates his portion of the world. So you just think you're eating breakfast, but what you're actually doing when you say a bracha and you're eating the food in order to serve Hashem, which ultimately we're doing, but sometimes we don't think along those lines, you're elevating that time, that place, that, that particular food. You're not only raising the food up or raising the tefillin up, you know, comes from a cow. You're not only raising the tefillin or the food or that particular object that you're using, but also the time and the place and everything else and much further uh, accomplishment spiritually that happens, that takes place, that we don't even know, obviously. We'll probably never know. For example, when you eat and drink and the like, one's dwelling and his utensils, everything, the knife they use to cut the food, the fork they use to eat it, everything becomes elevated in your actions. 
the beautiful Chabad mug that you're using. Like everything becomes elevated to Hashem and may have been relying on you for that moment to elevate it. Last night, the Hayyam Yayim, was it the Oh, the, uh, the Daily Parsha Insight. It's like that Moshe Rabbeinu was not a Kayin, but he was able to pass on the Kahuna because Hashem gave him the, the Shlichus, the job. So a lot of times we feel, and I'm going to send this video to my friend. I'll say, I'll say his first name, Levi. Rabbi Levi and I were discussing the, the imposter syndrome. You know, how could I teach when I know internally I'm struggling and it's so difficult? And then I brought up an example, and we none of us are going to aspire to be like Reb Mendel Futterfas or some of these heroic uh, Hasidim from the past, or any you know all these Jews from the past that did unbelievable things. But he was in this you know Siberian Russian labor camp, you know sent away from his family, and he's standing in the frigid cold, and he's besimcha because he gets to daven in a place as he said, that possibly no Jew had ever davened before. Again, we're not trying to be like him, but the concept rings true in every action that we take, and in fact, in every thought, because thought, there's actually things going on, despite the fact that nobody else sees or hears your thoughts, but there are little bitty, you know, things going back and forth in your brain. But also the words that we say, the actions that we do. So maybe the world was waiting or is waiting for you to do that particular thing, to say that bracha at that particular time. By the way, even if you used that mug yesterday and you said the bracha on it and you're using it to give yourself a little energy boost for the day to serve Hashem, but that didn't happen today. At this moment, with maybe a different kavana and everything else. So everything that comes our way, we have to utilize. And just because you're going through some kind of a struggle internally, that shouldn't stop you from teaching and doing and being productive in a spiritual form to elevate this world. Because you can't say, you know, I don't feel like it. Well, what about all the people? What about all the soldiers in Israel that are waiting for you to do your mitzvah so that they could be protected? You're going to be fetching that, you know, you don't feel like it because you don't feel worthy enough. We have to do our job regardless of what we feel like inside. And just like Moshe Beno may have said, I'm not worthy. Hashem says, you're my shliach. You got to do what you got to do. And let me handle the rest. So surely there's more than 600,000 souls, as we said before. Besides, it's quite impossible for one person to use a 600,000th of the entire world. I'm sorry. It's quite impossible for one person. Yeah, that's what it said. I like took a second look there. One person to use 600,000th of the entire world. So what does that really mean? The 600,000 particular souls are the roots. And roots grow numerous branches. Each root soul subdivides into 600,000 sparks, each spark being one neshama. So, um, interesting, like you have a root. If you have a sidewalk by your uh, by your house or a little walkway, and you have a tree next to it, you know the root problem. <laughs> we had one. They just go all over the place, and you take care of one. We had to pull up the the little driveway, you know, the little walkway. Pull the thing, took your one, and then the next year another one. You know, their roots go all over the place. So from one root could be not just the roots, but the tree and how many branches come from it. So two sparks. If you take uh, metal and against metal and you bang it together, how many sparks come out? You can't even count them. It's like maybe thousands in a split second. So too the neshamas. You come, you take from the 600,000 general souls of the Jewish people. Maybe if we want to consider it that left Mitzrayim, that was the Jewish nation. But from there are millions and millions of neshamas, actually maybe in the billions from throughout the generations, right? I don't know. You can count it if you want. But each spark is a singular neshama. Similarly, with the nefesh and the ruach in each of the four worlds, atzilus, bri, and yisir, the higher worlds, and asiya, in each of these four worlds are found all three soul levels. The nefesh, the ruach, and the neshama. We'll continue that idea more so tomorrow. But the takeaway is every single Jew 
is important with only one particular meaning. Only you can fulfill this particular mission, Larry. No one else can do your job. No one. Each of us has a divine purpose for which we were born. It is our job to elevate our circle of influence. So you could say, elevate our circle of influence. I have to teach Torah. Just being a Jew and doing what you're supposed to do. That alone is a starting point. Of course, if there's more to do, there's more to do. But no one else can do your job. If you don't do it, you're going to drop the ball. Drop the ball. Yeah, go, okay. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Go, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Oh, nice. Maury's here. Okay, thanks, guys, for joining us. And have a wonderful day. And don't forget to do your mission today. <laughs>